That's going to make you a sharper pilot who's more in touch with the aircraft. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. I was recently out filming for our ground school app and there were three things that came up that I'm gonna give you here in this video that I think will add to your flying. Uh, these are things you may not have heard from your flight instructor as you were coming through the system or if you're working with an instructor now, it's something that you guys can consider when you're out there practicing. The first thing is on the tur turn coordinator, which is by far one of my favorite instruments. I think it is a very underappreciated instrument in the panel. Um, and so I just wanted to talk through the fact that when those wings aren't banked, you are physically not turning even if the aircraft is banked and also how to visualize slips and skids. Uh, here, here are some thoughts. All right, so let's take a look at the turn coordinator. If those wings are not showing any sort of uh, turn, I'm gonna call it a turn, not a bank, because it technically doesn't show you the bank of the aircraft. I mean, I can bank the aircraft like this, and if I use opposite rudder, I can keep those wings pretty much level, and you can see we're actually banked, right? So what you are seeing when the wings roll like that is the sort of rate of roll. It, the turn coordinator, as opposed to the turn indicator, will show you that rate of roll. So it's short, you kind of have to just average those bounces when you're out in bumpy air like we are today. Um, but the ball beneath it is your inclinometer, shows you the quality of the turn. In a coordinated turn, the ball would just be sitting sort of dead center. A little hard on a bumpy day like today, but there it is. Okay, now if you were to be in a slipping turn, the ball would move to the inside. So imagine that it's that's the tail. You can sort of see the tail, visualize the ball as the tail falling toward the inside of the turn, as opposed to the ball moving to the outside of the turn as you would see in a skidding turn. So if you just sort of visualize the ball as the tail of that little miniature aircraft, you can easily see what the quality of your turn is. And of course, the goal is to keep the ball in the center, but you don't want to get fixated on that. You want to do the lesson that I gave you on how to feel all of this in the airplane. That's going to make you a sharper pilot who's more in touch with the aircraft. Okay, so that's a great demo. Just bank the wings, hold the rudder, and see that the aircraft is not turning. You have to believe that the little wings on that turn coordinator are simply measuring head heading change through the horizon. The other thing is you can see the ball as the tail of your airplane. You see that? So that if you're in a slipping turn, that is with your inside wing sort of leading the turn, you've got top rudder or outside rudder, you can see the ball of the, air of the little inclinometer as the tail of your airplane, and the same is true for a skid. The second thing that I wanted to point out is just how important the geometry of an approach is. Uh, I'm over there at Oakland, I'm just practicing, I'm, I'm filming, and by the way, you can see that normally I'm with a student, but in this video, uh, I've got the cameras framed from the student perspective. So it's mounted perfectly at the design eye height of the Cessna, we've got a left wing view, we've got a panel view, we've got a me view, um, that's all from our ground school app. If you haven't seen the skills section of our ground school app, it is literally like having a CFI at home. So sometimes people ping me and say, hey, can we fly together? Um, and it's tough to get on my schedule right now. I say download the ground school app, do the free three-day trial, check out that skills section. Uh, regardless of whether or not you're a beginner or an experienced pilot, I know that there's stuff in there that'll help you. Um, so here I am at Oakland. It's a really strong wind on this day and I'm at a thousand feet in the traffic pattern and they ask me if I can fly a short approach, which was a surprise. So I'm high, I'm really high out there. I'm a thousand feet on the base leg. And I just wanted to remind everybody that the geometry of your approach is really important. So I don't turn in here. I don't cut the corner at all. I fly just until the last minute and then watch as I turn the airplane, I go into a steep bank and I let the nose fall. So you can see right here on the VSI, I'm getting a pretty large descent. You can see here on the airspeed, I'm not gaining too much airspeed. So my stall speed increase here is negligible because I'm not pulling. So I square off that turn to final, use a steep 
steep bank to lose a lot of altitude. When I roll out on final, fortunately I had a strong wind to sort of finish the job, but I, I made that runway easily. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is this drift exercise. If you have access to a long runway, like a four or 5,000 foot runway, um, this will definitely help you perfect your crosswind technique and memorize what it looks like when the aircraft is aligned with the runway. And I simply just line up with the right edge of the runway, this is 2-8 left, and I just side slip into the wind, side slip downwind, side slip into the wind for the full length of the runway as a low approach without ever intending to land. All right, now we're going to try this drift exercise. We're going to get down to about 50 feet here. 76, 79, okay, re re reposition behind your company there via Romeo Bravo, hold short runway 2-8 left. Good. And we are going to sort of fly the right edge of the runway. And, it was, uh, seven, and then uh, one zero off, you were ready for departure back there, We're going to slip. So this is a side slip. We're keeping the nose pointed straight down the runway. And we're just sort of drifting back and forth. Go all the way left. And then we go back to the right. And you can see that you just point the ailerons in the direction you want the aircraft to move and use just enough opposite rudder to prevent the nose from coming. And it has this sideways motion. These are side slips. Or called drift exercises if you're a CFI working with a student that's having trouble with crosswind landings. That's a great place to start. All right, aviators, there you go. Three tips that I think will take your game up at least to 11. This game goes to 11. <laughs> and the Ground School app will take your game off the charts. So if you haven't seen it, definitely download it. Do the free three-day trial. Um, I know you're going to find stuff in there. We keep improving the app. There's all sorts of direct links right to FAA textbooks. Uh, there's flying videos in there. There's a knowledge section, practice written tests, and, and much, much more. Also, a huge thanks to the sponsors for their support of this channel. Uh, remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what videos you'd like to see on this channel. Also, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell so you don't don't miss the notifications and uh, most importantly until next time be safe and fly your best <laughs>